Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome to GNR Central, and we got your news for today. So Duff McKagan recently told Spin Magazine the first time he saw Axl Rose live, and what that experience was like. He told Spin, I just learned about the truth in music. I never got into music for the money or the chicks. You don't start playing in punk rock bands to get chicks or money because there was none of that. It was about the music and the pure fear of that and seeing bands like it. The first time I saw Axel, Slash took me, and I met Slash first in LA, and he took me to see LA Guns, very, very early LA Guns, and Axel was a singer. I see this dude come out, and it's like rawness. I see a real singer and a real ferocity, and I'm like, this guy might jump off stage and kick my butt. He broke a glass on stage, something set him off, and it was real. You saw people back away, and I'm like, I love this guy, he'd laugh. Uh, turning now to some Slash news, Slash has released the first trailer for his live DVD release, Living the Dream, which uh, is coming out this September. It was shot at a gig he played recently in England, and if you guys want to check out the trailer, he's released for it on social media. I've linked to it down below. Its release date is September 20th, and he's already released a couple more videos since this story broke from the actual gig up on YouTube. Turning now to some uh, Steven Adler news, so you guys probably know the last news we had about him was that he, there was that supposed attempt to take his life, he cut himself in the stomach, it was all an accident, and he's out on tour with his band Adler's Appetite, but there's some great news for Steven, he adopted um, a dog from a uh, pet sh from an animal shelter, and his name is Bukowski, so I thought this was a really nice photo, and it's good to see Steven doing really well. Turning now to some other news, uh, Kings of Chaos played another gig recently, and it's a super group for those of you guys who aren't familiar with. They have a pretty revolving lineup. Uh, the one constant is, is usually Matt Sorum as the drummer. So the super group's lineup would play a show at the Washington County Fair in uh, West Bend, uh, Wisconsin. And their lineup on that show included Ace Freely, Sebastian Bach, Gilby Clark, Warren uh, DiMartini, uh, DiMartini from Rat, James Lomenzo, as well as Matt Sorum. And they played a variety of different songs. They played, you know, mostly hard rock songs, and they're all covers, basically. They played some um, uh, New York Groove. They played some um, Skid Row songs. They played some Guns N' Roses covers, including Knocking on Heaven's Door. They did some Kiss covers as well. I've put the link to those performances down below. Uh, Slash even showed up backstage at the gig and took a photo with the guys. He was on tour with um, Alice Kennedy and the Conspirators at that point in time, but he never got on stage with the group, unfortunately. And Slash has played in Kings of Chaos. He toured with them in South Africa a couple of years ago, back in like 2013. Turning now to some unusual Guns N' Roses news. So Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star and Charlie Sheen's ex, Denise Richards, recently spoke to the New York Times about being on the popular show including the first time she met producers uh, of the show, and she said that she chose to go casual in terms of her dress that day, and uh, rather than the glam look, which is more associated with the show. She said, they said I was the first one to ever come in not all dolled up, Richards told the New York Times, saying she wore a Guns N' Roses t-shirt and ripped denim. Even for the interview with the renowned newspaper, New York Times reported that Richards sported a Fleetwood Mac tee and jeans. She's been known to dress down around the other housewives, saying, I thought... I thought I was dressed up wearing shorts that had crystals embellished on them, she said of one of the outfits, but not dressed up for them. And I don't know if you guys have seen Denise Richards lately. Um, she's also been rocking some other, um, you know, rock and roll acts on her t-shirts. She was wearing like a John Vervados, Billy Idol shirt uh, in last season's show, I believe. And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen her appearance lately, but she's like a good advertisement for why not to get plastic surgery. She looks completely different than she used to, like, you know, back in her prime. And it's obvious that she's had a lot of work done on her face. And turning now to another unusual story, uh, Forbes magazine wrote a story about Guns N' Roses. And they said like the Guns N' Roses reunion represents a perfect example for venture capitalists and young entrepreneurs. And I've put the link down below. And just generally, they're saying that the reunion has been very stable. It's uh, very tried and true, and it, I think it basically says that venture capitalist entrepreneurs shouldn't be too risky, whereas, you know, the Guns N' Roses tour is like a sure bet that it's going to make a lot of money. So uh, it's a pretty long article. Um, you guys can go check it out and let me know what your thoughts are. Turning now to some DJ Ashba news. So fans of the 10th best guitarist in Guns N' Roses uh, will be happy to know that he's talking a little bit more about his upcoming music project, which he announced a while back called Pyromantic. He also said the following about what his fan can expect. So he said Pyromantic is just an awesome project where basically 
What it is is I'm taking four different genres of music, Latin, pop, rock, and EDM, and putting it into a blender. I'm writing and producing the songs, and I'm going to play live with a DJ. So it's going to be me on guitar, just full blown. And then we're going to feature different singers from different genres of music on the big screens, and then the videos and everything. He said there's been a, this has been a two-year-long project, and it started off in the beginning, me and the singer from 6AM, uh, James Michael. We had some time off, and we started writing like we did. And then we eventually evolved, and obviously it went in a direction... I pushed really hard in a direction and then James kind of got busy and went off to do his own thing but it's evolved into an incredible thing over the last two years that's just awesome and we have congas and horns and it's very worldly it's designed to make the body move it's full-on dance stuff but it's great so he's also cited pyromantic as his number one priority he said that he is so so inspired by the music that he's recorded so far saying this is everything i've ever wanted to do it's kind of like your whole career you learn all these things you work with all these people and pyromantic is just kind of my labor of love it's something i truly want to do for me and it's so gratifying to be in this position he went on to say that uh, he's had an incredible career and he said that Power Magic will tour in the future. He said, we're kind of at the stage right now where I've gotten a ton of songs written. We're putting the right singers on, on every song now, and it's exciting. It's two years worth of hard work, and now we're starting to talk about it. When it what is the live show going to look like? What it's going to be? And me being a creative person, having an incredible creative team behind me, it's going to be a lot of fun to finally visually put something together. So that does it for today's news, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And as always, go check out my other uh, YouTube channel, Rock and Roll True Story Sticker.